twofold thoughts about today. First off, starting with the Lenten uh, Mass of the day, which sees in the Epistle taught to us really what we see in the way of what happens with the sin of uh, of envy that is caused there. You see in that Lenten epistle, and it's always good to read all of the, the masses of Lent, whether that Lenten mass is being said or, or not, because each one is, each day is really rich with a lot of symbolism. And we see today no, no different, and if we get the story from Genesis of, of Joseph, and he, when he has these dreams and his brothers become Envious of him. They see that he, he's having these dreams in which he's foretelling that, you know, that they will worship him on earth and not meaning a true worship like a divine worship, but the, but they'll be giving homage and relying on him. And they are truly envious and they, that he is a favored one despite being the youngest and that he's getting these dreams and he's getting these, 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 these things that are coming to him. And so they want to, they, they can't deal with that anymore. And so, uh, as we know how the story goes, envy, when it's allowed to foster, it becomes ugly, it becomes disgusting, and 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 as such, they they just can't deal with that. They, they instead of moving on and just saying, "Well, don't worry about it; it'll be what it will be," they they let it fester inside them, and it grows, and they look to get rid of Joseph, it's their own brother, and they decide we're going to kill him. We'll take him out. To, they, first, they try to leave him behind, and when he catches up to them, they, they decide, you know what? Here he comes again. Here comes the dreamer, as they call it. And then, the, you know, let's let's uh, kill him, and then tell our father, seeing as we're out in the wilderness, that a wild beast got him, and that that, uh, that there's nothing we could do about it. But he's gone. And the only way his life was spared was because one brother felt bad enough. He didn't want to commit murder. And he convinced the other ones, Reuben, convinced everybody else, no, let's just throw him into this pit in the wilderness and leave him there. And then whatever happens to him happens. But And we'll just tell our father that he's, he has died. But to, don't actually kill him. You don't want to be guilty. You don't have the blood on your hands per se. And, and that's what they end up doing. But Joseph is good. Joseph is... Is pure of heart. Joseph is, is sincere, and, and he is completely unenvious. And you know, the, the epistle ends with them, you know, preparing to throw him into the, the pit. But we know how the story continues. Eventually, he's rescued. He ends up in Egypt. He's favored in Egypt by the Pharaoh, and he's in charge of distributing the storage of grain when they have the long drought period. And it's sure enough. It is his own brothers that have to come up and beg him for food, and they don't even recognize him in that, that state. And of course, you know, Joseph is generous and gives unto them what all of that they need, and they, and they go back to, to, to his father. And so we see, on the one hand, that preoccupation of what happens to another and how it consumes. What goods come to another? What 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 blessings come to another person? We focus on that and think, well, how come those things don't come to me? How come I'm not, you know, fortunate in the same ways? And it consumes us and it makes us that ugly person inside, and it sullies our souls in that way. Then we move to today's saint, and we see that tie-in very nicely with Saint Isidore the farmer, because he he's a laborer. He's a worker. He works in the fields uh, in outside of Madrid in Spain. And his own fellow laborers for a while become envious of Isidore. Why? Well, Isidore is extremely devout. He's been that way since he was a little boy. And as a young as not even a not even as a young man, but as a when he gets old enough to work, he immediately takes up occupation working in the fields for a master. He doesn't own the fields himself. He is a hired laborer in the fields there working, you know, doing this, this manual labor, earning his bread by the sweat of his brow, as the scriptures command us to do. And he works diligently every day, but every single day he starts off by going to one of the churches in Madrid 
and hearing mass, attending mass, making devout, uh, devout attendance at a mass every morning. And oftentimes that means that he's going to have to be a little bit late for his occupation. And for a while, it bothers his fellow workers. They see that they have to show up at a certain time, but Isidore, he's allowed to come late. And the boss never says anything to Isidore. So what's the, what's the matter with that? And so they complain finally to the boss. You know, Isidore's late every single day. That means we're doing his work. That's not fair to us. And the boss, he doesn't say anything right away to Isidore, but instead shows up to see, does Isidore indeed come in late to work? Well, he's there in the morning. The other laborers arrive. And of course, Isidore is off at mass. But what does the, 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 the master of the, of the field see in Isidore's place? But St. Isidore's guardian angel comes and shows up and takes up the plow, which Isidore pushes all day long, and plows the field in the stead of St. Isidore so that he can go to mass and then come and work in the afternoon. And so, the boss sees this and, and, he, and he is marveled at it. He knows that this is truly a special man, a pious man. And so he never corrects Isidore on the fact of his going to Mass. He allows that to continue. And the laborers hear about it too. And then they start to shift in their own thoughts towards Isidore. No, wait a second. This man's a saint. This man's a holy man. And they, and they switch, and because they're not, they weren't wicked, they just were, were a bit envious, they realize, oh no, it's important that Isidore goes to Mass every day. And then moreover, they, there was another miracle that Isidore, that happened with St. Isidore too, is that when he did, an, another time when he did come to work afterwards, after having gone to Mass, he showed up and the workers and the, and the master of the fields, they all saw as St. Isidore moved along, it wasn't him alone on the plow, but actually two angels, one at each side of him during that time. And he did the work of three men in the day because the two angels assisted him in plowing the field. And nobody ever, ever complained about St. Isidore's attendance in Mass ever again from that point. And they all regarded him with the most high esteem in his life. In fact, uh, the... The master grew to be very fond of St. Isidore, and one day it was really brutally hot and had no water. And St. Isidore was there and realized that the master, you know, he was really terrible in a bad way from, from thirst. And so he struck the rock with his, with his, the staff that he had, and up sprang water, and the master was able to drink from the, from the spring that popped up, and it flows to this day. St. Isidore also not only was he good with his work, ever so faithful in all the work that he did, because that was really, aside from his attendance at Mass, it was a, also his faithfulness to his duties that helped sanctify himself. But he extended that out beyond work as well into the area of charity for those around him. And that he was always giving, you know, being a, a simple laborer, he didn't have a large quantity of means, but he was always ready and willing to give to the poor whenever he saw a need for it. And on one occasion, so what he used to do oftentimes, would, uh, he would invite people that he'd find to his house, the poor, and he'd say, oh, you don't have food tonight. Why don't you come and to my house? I have food. You can eat with me. And one time he found that there was a whole group of poor people that didn't have food for themselves that night. And, and as he oftentimes did, he invited them to his house. And his wife, who was also very saintly herself, um, she always was ready to, to serve whoever Isidore brought home. And when he brought them home, it was realized that there was too many people. And when she started to dish up the food, there was several of the men that were still left, and all that was left for food was the serving that was on was going to go on Saint Isidore's plate himself. And so she looks at her husband and says, "I'm sorry, it's the food for these people. I don't know what to do." And he says to her, just very simply and plainly, "Go check the pot again." And so his wife goes over to the pot. 
looks in there and it's completely filled with the stew that she had been making, which had already run out. And she was able to serve up enough food for everybody to eat to complete the fullness and to be completely satisfied. Another great miracle worked by Saint Isidore. There's this constant thing that he that was going on. Everybody around held him in such high esteem because they viewed him to be this great saint living amongst them. But what did he do for his part? He just was a humble man who put mass above everything else, who went to mass every day that he could. He did his duty faithfully, his work diligently and and expeditiously, and he and he was generous in charity to his neighbor. He did all of those things, just that simple means of sanctifying himself. He became a great saint to the point that when he died, I mean, he came out to, 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 to his funeral for his burial, and he was buried in the, in the um, St. Andrew's Cemetery there by the little church. And after a while, it became known that God didn't want him in that place any longer, in that cemetery. He wanted him to be in a more suitable place. And so they exhumed his body to bring him to the church. And they found him completely incorrupt and exuding a sweet fragrance uh, from his coffin. And so they truly knew a man very much blessed by God and very much blessed because he was faithful in the things that every single one of us can do. Mass, work, and charity. Those three things were the staple every day of St. Isidore the Farmer. It's for that reason is highly blessed in heaven. May God bless you.